Hey everybody, it's Josh here. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started, this video is intended for security research and educational purposes only. So don't watch this and then go and commit some kind of crime or something like that. That's definitely not my intent. So just be sure to follow the law and smash the like button. So in this video, we're gonna cover what a keylogger is and how it's used. And then we're going to do a demonstration where we like capture some of our own keystrokes and then have the keylogger automatically email them to us. We'll also be looking at a tiny bit of code in C-sharp just to explain how a few things work, but don't worry because I want to try to keep this video as simple as possible. If you really want like the hardcore details of how this particular keylogger works, like the key press events and like the hook and all of that stuff, just uh, check out this video I made like a couple years ago. It goes really in depth, um, but I'm not going to go that deep in this video. After watching this video, you should get a pretty good intuition on how keyloggers work. You'll also be able to take the source code that we talk about in this video and compile it and run it on your own computer if you want to and at the very end i'll show you how to take the executable and then have it silently run on another computer if you want to do that for educational purposes or security research only <laughs> simply put a keylogger is just a special piece of software that records keystrokes as you type on the keyboard as you can imagine something like this has a lot of use cases in cybercrime so if you imagine you're some kind of malicious bad guy and you manage to install a keylogger on a couple thousand different people's computers, everything that those people type is going to get sent back to you and you'll get all kinds of information, whether it's intended or not, like from social media credentials, bank account credentials and banking information. You'll get like conversations, you'll get like Google searches, you'll get weird hub searches, you'll get every possible thing that you can think of and more stuff. As a poor victim, even if you don't get your bank account or social grabbed, if you happen to have a weird conversation or search something weird, that can still be used to extort you to then get some kind of money or something or something else. So it's it's pretty serious. There are probably some like legitimate use cases for a keylogger like monitoring employees or surveilling potential criminals or something, but most people like if you're being keylogged, you feel like a really deep breach of your privacy. Especially if you're just an employee at work trying to do your job and maybe you, you want to take a break and like, you know, Google something or chat with someone or something like this. So getting into how our keylogger works, if you want to follow along in code, go ahead and download Visual Studio Community for free. And then when you're installing it, make sure you select .NET desktop environment. And then after you get Visual Studio installed, go ahead and go to this link right here. I'll put it in the description. When this page loads, go to code and then click download zip and open it. And then just put this file, this folder inside on the desktop. Close all this stuff. And then open the folder. And then there should be an SLN file in here. That's a solution. Go ahead and open this. And OK. And say OK. And then here's our project. You'll see on the right, you can expand this uh, my keylogger and then it's really tiny, but uh, expand this program.cs or double click it rather. And then here is our source code. So to run the code, all we have to do is click this green start up here. So we'll click that. You'll notice this big black screen opens. This is just an output to show uh, what keys are being logged. So for example, if I go to google.com, you can see this gets logged up here. I press enter, it logs the return key. And say I type like, for example, how do I, you can see it gets logged. And if I erase stuff, it, it shows, it actually shows that I'm just pressing, I'm just pressing the back, the back button. It doesn't actually erase, you know, it doesn't actually erase anything in the actual log. So for example, how do I uh, run fast? something like this. And you can see it logs every, everything you type, pretty much everything. So for example, I was trying to sign into a fake chase earlier. So for example, if I try to log into my bank or something, uh, you can see I, I pressed, I typed in my username. Oh, you'll see here the log got sent to my email, but and then it started logging again. But you can see I typed my my username and I press tab and then I held down the right shift key and I pressed P. So that means capital P and then A S S W O R D and then D one just means like uh, the number line. So for example, they, they just come out like that for, for some reason. Um, but anyway, if you, you can press a bunch of buttons, we'll log them all and you see like, um, 
all these like mail sending, mail sending. So a reason for this, I'm gonna go back to the source code really fast. Just the way I made this particular keylogger, like the files, like as you type stuff, the text gets logged to this text file here. And then when this file size reaches 300 characters, this log will get archived and then the archive will, will get sent to you in your email. So for example, if I go to my mail, you, you saw I, I spammed uh, a whole bunch of keys and then you can see them coming out in the email. And so the way this the keylogger is written right now, um, you can you can turn this to false, this include log as attachment to false, and then you'll only have the body. But uh, if it's true, then you'll get this attachment as well uh, in case you wanted that for, for some reason. So everything you type pretty much gets logged and then it gets sent to your email. So you can see like, so you can see, ah oh crap. Like this one had a, a password in it. Oh, not this one. I think it was this one. Yeah. Half of my username. The other half is probably on like a different email than the password and then in all of this good stuff. So basically, basically when you when you have, if you download this keylogger and run it, this is the only portion of the code that you really have to worry about. You can you can look at the rest of the code if you want to like mess around with it. Um, again, there's that other video if you want to deep dive into what the code is, but this is the only part that you really have to care about. So this from email address and from email password, this is going to be the email address that you're going to send the logs from. So in this case, you might create a test email, then enter the na your name and, and password here. And this two email addresses, who's going to be receiving the logs, it can be the same email as this guy. And then this log file name, this is just where the log file and the archive are on the disk. I just pro chose program data because normal users can usually write to this directory. And it's fairly innocuous, like you people don't really know where know that it's there unless they already know for some reason. Uh, again, this, this is if you want to include an attachment as well as have the logs in the body and then this is how big the log file has to get the local one before the email is sent so for example if we go to program data we can see this like uh my log and then the log archive down here you can see like the my log like as you as you press buttons and type you can see this grows and when once it gets to 300 so if i press one more key or like two more keys, I guess, it's gonna save this to the archive, and then it will send another email. So and then see it rolled over and there's one byte now. So if we check our email again, we should have some more logs. Yeah, very cool. One more thing I should mention when you're setting up your Gmail to send and receive uh, or to send emails from the C sharp application or from the keylogger, you have to go to this less secure apps, you can just Google like Gmail turn on less secure apps or something. But this thing has to be on otherwise your your program won't be able to send emails on your your Gmail's behalf. So just make sure this is on. And by the way, I just want to say if you get lost or stuck or something, just let me know in the comment section, I'll help you out as soon as I can. And if you want to help me out and if you like this video uh, if you could like and subscribe i'd really appreciate it definitely help the channel out but okay just two more things to cover and then we'll be done so next i just want to show you how you're able to run this without having this giant black screen letting everyone know what you're what you're doing so to fix that we'll just go to our go to our project over here and then go to properties and then out, output type, just change this to Windows application. And then um, so you can say clean and build. And build and then you probably don't have to do that, but I just for some reason, it's a habit and then run it. And then you'll see, save this and close this. And then you'll see it's running, we have our stop sign up here, but we don't have that that big black screen uh, letting everyone know that we're key logging their data. And we can tell because see this uh, my log file and we can see it's four bytes. Um, if I start pressing a bunch of buttons, you see it, it goes up. So we know the keys are still being logged. Hi, keys are being logged. So if I open this, for example, oh boy. Hi, keys are being logged. And again, press a bunch of buttons. Uh, it rolls over and it gets sent to our email. So now that we have this, uh, our program kind of working the way we want, and it doesn't have that screen open. Um, if you want to take the executable, for example, and put it on another computer, we can stop this, uh, go ahead and stop it from running. 
and then we'll right click our project over here and then click uh, open in explore so here here's the here's our project location just go into bin and debug and then you can take this uh, executable and just you can just put it anywhere like put it on another, another computer for testing or something or you can use a uh, task scheduler and make it open like when the computer turns on i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do that whole thing right now but for example you can use task scheduler and you can say like for example you can say create a task and then you can say for the task you can do something like open my key logger for example the trigger would be for example at logon um, the trigger will be a logon and then the action you want to do is you want to start a program then you just select the program that you want to start uh, so in our case you just select the the key logger exe or something and then just save this and then um of course test it but you, you can set it up so like whenever someone logs on or whenever the computer turns on the key logger like opens and then it, it logs the keys but go ahead and experiment with that again um don't don't commit crime that's bad and then one last thing i want to show you um since this this application we made is technically um uh, it it could be malicious right it could definitely be categorized as malware but it's uh custom malware so there shouldn't be any signature in the wild based on our code as long as we like you know make it unique to us but having said that it can still be caught by like a heuristics or behavior analysis or something maybe like they're looking for applications that look for key press events and log you know log stuff to text files so for example i'll show you what i mean so if we go to virus total virus total.com basically you can upload stuff to this and then um the file will be ran and in, in detonated or whatever on a bunch of different uh, anti-malware engines and then it will show you if the file is essentially if it's malicious or not so i'm just going to browse to um i'm just going to browse to our executable and bin and debug and this is our file right so i'm going to upload it to virus total and then you can kind of take a look and, and see what i mean once once it's analyzed so it's pretty it's pretty interesting a small portion of the end like the, the apparently there was like 71 total engines this was being tested against and only 17 of them recognized that this was like a potentially malicious thing that's because we can assume these ones where it didn't detect that it was malware these are probably just using some kind of signature based detection and we can assume these guys are using some kind of anomaly detection or behavior analysis or they may have detonated it or they may have opened it inside of some sandbox and noticed that it was calling like the um what is it like the low level keyboard process and looking for key press events um just be careful like again don't don't do anything like illegal right but if you're testing it at home you, you might consider like you know if you have um like defender or like kaspersky or one of these who like caught it you, you might have to like turn it turn that off or make an exception and yeah, that's our key logging tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you happen to know anyone who might think it's cool, feel free to share with them too. And if you take the source code and edit it, I'd be totally interested in hearing like what you're doing with your lab and like how you changed it and all of that good stuff. Also, if you have questions or you can't get it to work, please tell me in the comments and I'll definitely respond. But anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it and see you next time.